Uh, many people here live in fear of snakes. They, they won't open their windows or they have a beautiful garden but the kids aren't allowed outside because there's snakes. But snakes are the least of your concerns in, in South Africa. But the biggest threats in South Africa are fellow humans. A few articles this year have stated it's between 60 and 70 people are murdered per day in South Africa. So we do not have 60 to 70 people per day being bitten by snakes. Not, not nearly that. There are a lot of black mambas in Durban um, and that's because we have a lot of good natural habitat, a lot of nature reserves, a lot of cliffs and valleys, but we also have a lot of man-made habitat for them. Of the few hundred black mambas I've worked with, none have like, gone after me or chased me. On warm days in summer, my phone rings all day long. Um, it's either people asking to have a snake removed or people want to ask questions about snakes. Um, my name is Nick Evans and I'm a snake rescuer in Durban, South Africa. After school I worked at a snake park for two years and then after that I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do and uh, I got involved in snake removals and I decided I, I enjoyed it a lot and uh, I started doing that full time. It's important to rescue snakes and not kill them because snakes are um, an important link in the food chain. They are predators of many animals, they're really useful for rat control um, and they are food for other animals such as birds, mongoose and a few other animals. Um, so they're important in the food chain and we need them if we want to live in a healthy environment. Um, they're also living animals, they're living creatures, they, um, they have a right to live. Um, they're not out to get us, they, they're just trying to survive in a, a world that's, you know, got a lot of human development, so, yeah, they need protecting. <laughs> we ask people not to kill snakes, not just because we like snakes. Um, snakes are animals, they feel pain, uh, so it's, it's a cruel thing to do. Um, but we also ask people not to kill snakes because it's extremely dangerous for people. So, you know, to hit a black mamba with a stick is putting one's life at risk um, because a, a mamba or any snake doesn't want to bite a person but if you start hitting it or, or doing something horrible to it then it wants to defend itself so it's just safer for people not to kill them. Uh, many people here live in fear of snakes they, they won't open their windows or they have a beautiful garden but the kids aren't allowed outside or they're scared to go into a nature reserve because there's snakes but snakes are the least of your concerns in, in South Africa. Um, I recently heard bees kill a few people every year in Durban, dogs attack a few people every year, but the biggest threats in South Africa are fellow humans. Um, just before filming this interview we googled the murder rates in South Africa and at, and at the end of 2023 and a few articles this year have stated it's between 60 and 70 people are murdered per day in South Africa. So. We do not have 60 to 70 people per day being bitten by snakes, not, not nearly that. So people are by far the biggest concern in South Africa. When I'm everywhere I'm very vigilant and watching what people are doing. I'm always on high alert with people but snakes I'm not worried about at all. In Durban we have a few people bitten by snakes every year but it's not nearly as many as what people would think. Yes, we have a lot of black mambas, cobras and venomous species and we have I think close to 4 million people now but bites are very rare, especially with black mambas which surprises people. I try to record snake bites and keep a database. Um, I try to work with doctors um, so I don't record every case because uh, I know there's some I don't hear of, especially like in rural clinics but I record maybe two to three maybe four black mamba bites a year which is really nothing. Most of those bites are on either people trying to kill the snake or capture it. Um, so far in 2023 I think I've had two black mamba bites recorded and both were on handlers. Um, so that gives you an idea of the mamba's nature. Um, the snake that bites the most people in Durban is the stiletto snake. It's not because it's hunting people, it's because people pick it up. Occasionally someone will step on it barefoot at night, but almost always it's an adult male who's picked it up. Yeah, because I, I, I keep note of that. Adult male, adult male. Women seem to know not to pick them up, but an adult male 
especially when there's alcohol involved or pick up a stiletto snake and get bitten. Um, uh, I get maybe 20, around 20 stiletto bites a year that, that I hear of in Durban. Um, we get a few bites from night adders. It's also sometimes people stepping on them, but a lot of the time picking them up. Um, so that's not a lot. Um, for some reason, Mozambique spitting cobras bite the most people in South Africa every year, but in Durban, I haven't recorded a bite in a few years now, um, which is quite interesting because we have lots of them. In the Durban area, I haven't recorded a death from snake bite in a few years. Um, there was one about a year or two ago, but bit north of Durban in a very rural area unfortunately the man couldn't get to a hospital I wouldn't call it Durban though but further north but in the city itself you know we have quite a few hospitals and a number of them have anti-venom so if someone is bitten by a snake any snake and they go to hospital they should survive um, a few of the bites we've recorded are dry bites or very mild envenomations um, so some people here think a mamba bites is a death sentence but we've learned that's not the case a lot of people here will chop down every tree every bush every blade of grass and they'll put concrete because they believe that will keep snakes away plants are not the problem rubbish is the problem so i still go to homes where there's no plants it's just concrete but that people have a pile of wood or bricks or something like that so it's really important for people to keep the the yard neat and tidy so I always encourage people to keep trees and, and shrubs, especially indigenous ones. It's just good for the environment. Um, but keep trees cut away from roofs, because that's a good way for snakes to access the roof. Or keep shrubs trimmed away from uh, windows. Um, but just keep the yard neat and tidy. Like Don't have piles of rubbish and wood. Um, if, if there's a storeroom, try and keep it neat try and block any holes so any access for the snakes and that's the best you can do there's no repellents to keep snakes away a lot of people here use jay's fluid toxic chemical there's commercial repellents people burn tires there's all sorts of things um, someone told me the other day they put rotten fruits around to keep snakes away. none of that works so just yeah, need to keep things clean Rescuing snakes for me is a full-time job, um, which is really difficult from a financial point of view. Uh, I don't earn a salary of sorts, I'm not paid by the government or anyone, um, so I have to raise funds myself. Um, so I also do safety talks, uh, snake safety talks at companies or snake awareness talks at schools, which brings in some income. But for the removals and rescues, uh, snake removers in Durban try to charge a call out fee. We try where we can, but there's a lot of underprivileged people here, so we we are always helping people who can't afford it for free at our own expense. Um, or you know, we ask for a donation where possible. Um, so raising funds is challenging, but we 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 try. <laughs> My day depends on the weather. If it's cold and raining, it's usually a bit quiet, and I try and focus on my admin work and my research. Um, on warm days in summer, my phone rings all day long. Um, it's either people asking to have a snake removed or people want to ask questions about snakes. A lot of people report snakes that they saw a few days ago. Uh, people just want to chat, but most of the time it's for snake removals or questions about snakes. Uh, but my phone rings all day long. <laughs> it's, uh, and plans can change very quickly. You know, we might be going somewhere and then suddenly there's a black mamba in someone's house and everything changes. Most of the calls I go on are usually within about 30, a 30 minute drive of my, my house. Um, you know, we want to respond as quickly as possible, especially if the snake is outside because it could disappear quite quickly. Um, but there are other snake removers around and we try to network with each other. So if the call is far away, like maybe an hour long drive, uh, I'll look for someone closer and if I'm unavailable I'll try and find someone else to help. Uh, I usually always carry tongs with me and I have a hook stick in the car. Um, the tongs I use for black mambas, green mambas and spitting cobras. Um, with cobras you know you can use the hook and tail method but I like tongs because I try and pin them down before they spit at me. I, 
I try not to be spat at, as, as, as yeah, I, I try never to be spat at, um, try not to be exposed to venom. With mambas, I like to pin the head down as quickly as possible, um, especially because, you know, we're often in tight spaces, I don't like to pull them out by the tail and, you know, anything can go wrong in tight spaces or up in a tree, I like to have the head secure, um, same with green mambas. Um, but otherwise, I'm, I'm usually alone. You know, it's, it's hard to find someone who has time to come along or is it no funds to pay someone to come along. A lot of people comment about my footwear because I don't wear boots. Uh, in, in Durban, we're quite relaxed. Um, but I'm always in my, we call them slops here, or flip-flops overseas, I think. But I'm always wearing them. Um, I just... A lot of the time I just, you know, I'm walking around, I, or I'm in the shops, or I'm, you know, I'm just around and I don't put on shoes every day, like closed shoes. So when I get a call, I just run out the house. When people see a snake, they should move away from it. Um, usually I just tell people, leave it alone. That's the number one rule. Just don't try to catch it, don't try to kill it. Here, sometimes we have people getting bitten because they're trying to help the snake, but snakes don't know we're trying to help. So leave it alone, don't try to catch it or kill it, just move away and phone a professional for help. When I get a call, I ask people, where's the snake right now? You know, is it inside? Is it in a tree? Um, I'll try and ask for a description. We try to ask for a photo when we can. Um, some people want to video call us, but it's never very clear. Photos are more clear. Um, uh, I'll ask if they can see it now because that's a very important question I've learned. Because sometimes you get there thinking the mamba's there and they say, oh no, it was last week. <laughs> if the caller sends me a photo and I can confirm it's a non-venomous species, I'll try and encourage them to leave that snake in the garden because it can't hurt anyone and it can do its job in, in the garden, eating rats or frogs. And, um, if it is a venomous species, we'll go out. Um, we just ask people watch the snake from a distance some people don't watch the snake and then we get there and we can't find it and we don't usually ever find it again or see it again. Um, so it's really important people watch the snake for us. Um, it's also really important that people keep their dogs away. Sometimes when we go we have to try and you know, keep a black mamba on one side and dogs on the other side and it's, it's just dangerous for us and, and for dogs too. I've gotten to calls where people let their dogs out to kill snakes and then the dogs usually kill the snake, but then they are in a lot of trouble afterwards or, or die. Cats seem to avoid venomous snakes, um, but dogs, they want to protect their family, their home, so they will go and they will kill black mamba, spitting cobra, and then they either get bitten or spat at. So unfortunately, we do have a bit of snake-dog conflict every year. In 2022, I recorded, I think, 10 cases of black mambas and dogs most of the dogs died and I think all of the snakes died. Um, the, the most common cases I see are dogs being spat at by cobras. Most of the time the cobras get away thanks to that spitting ability, it works well for them. And thankfully it's not serious for dogs. I mean it's very painful and they need treatment but they don't die. So the species that I'm called most often for is the spotted bush snake which is non-venomous. I get called for them all day long, especially in summer. And it's, most people think it's a green mamba with black spots, but it's not and it's totally harmless. They are everywhere and they love going into people's roofs where we can't catch them. So lots of them, lots of brown house snakes, which are also non-venomous. Uh, venomous species, there are a lot of black mambas in Durban. Um, and that's because we have a lot of good natural habitat, a lot of nature reserves, a lot of cliffs and valleys. But we also have a lot of man-made habitat for them. So there's a lot of rubbish. Durban is quite a dirty place. We have a high rat population. There's a lot of feral cats and mambas eat the kittens. We have a, a good uh, population of dussies. But yeah, many, house, many of the houses we go to, there's piles of rubbish, wood, things like that. Or people dump their garden refuse and it's just, just perfect places for mambas to live. Um, there are quite a few Mozambique spitting cobras. Although in the last two or three years, I don't get as many as I used to. Um, night adders, the, um, the rhombic night adder, also don't get as many as I used to, but they're still quite common. 
And then we get a few other venomous species like vine snakes or twig snakes, um, stiletto snakes, um, and then there's a few others. Yeah. A few years ago, night adders and Mozambique spitting cobras were the venomous snakes I was most often called for, and third were black mambas. But nowadays, black mambas are probably probably joined, up, maybe up there with night adders, or, or they've overtaken night adders as the most common venomous snake that I'm called for. Um, I think there's less frogs around, less toads, and cobras here and night adders mostly eat toads, especially night adders, but also cobras, it's mostly toads. And I feel like there's, there's still a lot of toads, but I don't feel there's as many as possible. I haven't done a study. I don't think there's as many. Our rivers are terribly polluted. Um, people don't like toads in the garden because they make a noise. Loads of them get run over. So I would imagine the numbers are on decline, insects are on decline, so they're running out of food. I rescue many species of snakes every year. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how many, but with mambas, since 2015, I've rescued, the last count I did, I, I got over 600. Um, and it's always, that number's always going on because we have quite a few here. So, um, it's been a, a productive few years. Yeah. Before I started working with black mambas, I was actually really scared of them. I caught all snakes except black mambas because I heard all the stories about them being super aggressive and that. But when I was taught how to work with them at the snake park and uh, I learned more about their behavior and I started going on calls for them, I really learned that they're not so bad. Obviously their bite is really dangerous, but they have no, they don't want to bite us and they just want to get away and I quickly gained a lot of respect for them and I really admired them and it quickly became my favorite snake to work with. Stories I heard were like uh, a mambo, if it sees you, might chase you. Or if a mamba's in a corner, it will charge you. Um, if you go into a mamba's territory, you know, it will attack you and chase you. But I learned that that's not true. Um, it didn't take me long to realize that. They're really scared of people. They want nothing to do with us. Um, they're very intelligent. They, they know where a good escape route is. They know where their, their hideout is. They, they know when to back away. and and when they need to maybe defend themselves if they're in real danger but they're just intelligent animals they're really awesome they you know they're big they're impressive of the few hundred black mambas i've worked with none have like gone after me or chased me i have had some aggressive ones like really aggressive ones that have made me scared but those ones had all been attacked by people the worst one i ever dealt with was not a big one maybe 1.8 meters long and the people had sprayed it with bug spray it had, it had been poisoned. Um, I'm not sure if they'd tried to hit it with something, but they'd sprayed it with bug spray, and that snake was just so angry and upset. And that, that was quite a scary animal. Another one I remember is a big mamba on a shelf, and the people had got something like a steel rod, and they'd stabbed it once or twice. So that mamba was very angry. Any mamba that's been beaten or severely injured, they are really angry they really you know, they're in pain so when snakes are in pain they want to defend themselves so for me the most dangerous animal is a wounded one so again that's why we tell people please don't kill them because it's dangerous for the people and you know it makes life dangerous for us because people will try to kill them and if they're unsuccessful then they call us yeah as i grew interested in mambas i i wanted to learn more about them and i thought studying them in a more formal um, capacity would be would be interesting for me but also I wanted to contribute to conservation in the long term um, so I remember some snake catchers had been microchipping black mambas a few years prior to when I started and I wanted to start that project up again and so I did so the microchips are unfortunately not GPS trackers that that would be my dream but the microchips are just for ID purposes so they are the same microchips that go into dogs and cats. So if we ever capture that mamba again, we will know its history. We'll know where it was caught. We'll know its weight. So from that, we can see how far it's moved from its release site. Um, we'll see how much it's grown. And we can learn quite a lot from it. It's really interesting. It helps us to understand um, mamba management, really. Um, how, how best to relocate them. I also collected DNA samples for genetic study and 
uh, we're looking at metals and black mambas. We're doing a, a few studies on them. I'm looking at pet conflict between all venomous snakes in Durban, but including black mambas, conflict with people. So I'm trying to basically learn every aspect of them. Um, breeding behavior, male combat, egg laying. I try and record as much data as I can on black mambas and actually most snakes, but black mambas specifically. One thing I've learned as I've, when I started this research, uh, wasn't quite as popular as I maybe thought. Um, there are many people studying snakes um, and doing excellent work, but there's many people that could be collecting like excellent data and, and we could learn a lot. So I would really encourage anyone working with snakes, especially doing rescues, um, to collect as much data, record everything as possible because it's such a good way to learn about snakes. Especially in the developing world, we need to know what's happening, how humans and snakes are interacting, how development's affecting snakes. So just recording every little detail with snake rescues is just super valuable. I've gone on many calls that just turn out to be a bit ridiculous. Like I remember going for a black mamb in a tree and I saw something hanging out the tree that was black. It was a cat's tail moving. So cat's tail. I remember going for a black mamba that was attacking people. And I thought that was strange. And uh, when I got there, it was a piece of a, a rubbish packet, a black bag, black plastic bag, and the wind was blowing. And whenever the wind would blow, the packet would stand up. So that was the black mamba that attacked people. Toy snakes, uh, bags, um, snakes that have turned out to be rats, toads, geckos, I remember one snake in a hole was a crab. Um, I remember the one family called me for a big snake in the banana tree and it was a toy cobra that they put there and they all watched it for about 40 minutes until I arrived and the snake never moved and then I found out why. <laughs> so there are so many myths in South Africa about snakes and, and different cultures have different beliefs and that's all over the world. So I mean here like I mean, most people think a snake will attack you. That's just one. Some people think a snake can stick its tongue up your nose and suck your brains out. Some people think if you carry a piece of a mamba's body on you, it makes you bulletproof. Um, some people think snakes are like your ancestors coming to visit you. And then there's another belief that uh, there's a snake that lives in our dams and when it wants to move, from one dam to another dam it turns into a tornado and destroys villages and it, yeah so uh, a few months ago we actually did have a, a very small tornado it did do quite a bit of damage but nothing like what like in america the, not, not like those tornadoes but a lot of people saw that little tornado and said that's a snake migrating for the winter unfortunately it wasn't but that's just a, a myth that a lot of people believe there's a belief here that there's a snake with seven heads um, that moves around it's very dangerous there's a belief that there's a snake with a feather on its head that lives in the trees and if you're walking it will attack you but women if women are walking in the bush they can carry a pot of hot porridge on their head because if it attacks it will fall into the porridge and die um, if you carry a dead python across a river the python will come back to life and kill you. There's a lot of belief. Sometimes, you know, people will see something like the mamba with a feather, I mean the snake with a feather on its head. I think someone probably saw a snake shedding its skin and, um, and saw that as a feather. You know, people interpret things differently. Sometimes, uh, like the elder in a com community, someone's grandmother, will tell the children a very scary story to keep them away from animals. I've learned that. You know to um to to try and keep them safe so they'll say oh, don't go near a, a a frog because if it jumps on you it will stick on you forever um and you know so things like that so they're doing it to keep kids away from the animals and so but unfortunately as the kids grow up they never learn the truth and then the stories just spread and spread so that's why education is really important yeah. I have been bitten by venomous snakes, um, not on rescues fortunately. I'm always very careful on rescues, some people think I'm reckless because I don't wear proper shoes, but on rescues your adrenaline's going, you, you're like hyper focused, uh, and 
safety is a big thing for me. I don't want to go to hospital. I have been bitten. Uh, I had a green mamba as a, a captive green mamba that I used for educational work. And that snake bit me twice in the space of a year. Because in captive conditions, you're not quite as switched on. And I was, I was too careless and I got bitten twice by it. But both were dry bites. Well, the first one is an extremely mild envenomation. I was fine. I did go to hospital. And then when I was younger, I got bitten by a vine snake. Again, I was, I was being silly. I, I wanted photos of it. It wouldn't sit still and I pulled its tail and it bit me. So fortunately, the vine snake bite was a dry bite. I remember I was driving through a suburban area and I saw a large two and a half meter mamba crossing a road and it was going towards a house and I thought I'll catch it before it goes in there and just as it was disappearing into the grass I grabbed the tail and before I could get the tongs on it it spun around and its head actually hit my hand and that was the closest I've been bitten to bitten by a black mamba and it gave me a, a big fright I was very shaken up by that so that was the closest but i've had quite a few close calls um but you know i wouldn't have them if i wasn't doing something to the snake that mamba wouldn't if i walked up to it and took videos i would have been fine but i went and pulled its tail the biggest challenge facing all snake removers in south africa really and probably all over the world are, are funds um so for me i mean this in 2023 it's gotten really bad the cost of fuel is just has just gone so high. I've had to cut down on the number of calls I respond to. Um, before I used to go far into rural areas and help people who had snake issues, but now I can't do nearly as many as I used to. So so now I, I try and, and see if anyone else can go, just because I, I can't afford it and and things are getting a bit desperate. So it's, it's really difficult now. It's not it's it's a lot more stressful and it's life isn't quite as fun as it used to be now the, the stress of that and um you know it's quite frustrating when we get calls and uh you know we, we go there in this huge house and people have loads of cars and they don't want to give you anything it, you know that gets a bit frustrating but we we just try um but funds are the biggest problem um other challenges are, you know, we get calls almost every day for snakes seen a week ago or yesterday. I, you know, we can't do much about that. Most days we have rude people and that can get quite frustrating or impatient people or people that don't want to take your advice or, or yeah, that, that for me gets a bit frustrating. Um, People can follow my work on Facebook. It's just look up Nick Evans Snake Rescuer and it's the same on Instagram as well. So I post updates on there. Yeah. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell. Or if you want to support us more, you can even become a member of our YouTube channel. You can also buy our merchandise. Uh, link to our store is under the video in the description. Thank you.